Saitis Basniari from University of Colorado Boulder, and today I'm going to talk about Fuchsia. So I will show three aspects in this talk, but uh, before going to these details, I would like to thank NDSS community, especially the reviewers of our paper that helped us a lot to improve the paper and prepare the final version. So uh, I'm going to show motivation using an example from a Java web server. So Eclipse City is a Java HTTP web server that has been used in many projects, mostly for their machine-to-machine -machine communication. However, there are concerns about timing side channel in this web server. Let's see what was the issue. In Jetty variant one, imagine a stored password is my pass. An attacker tries to guess that password by sending different query and observing how long it takes for the Zeti to respond. So for a random query, uh, such as ABCDEF, it takes 0.5 units. And the idea is to obtain a prefix of the secret in each step that attack. So uh, the, as you can see, the fr uh, first character with P is still, it takes the same amount of time. It is the same for any character except for the correct one, that's M. And for M, it takes slightly more time for the Zeti to respond. So at this point, attacker realized that the first character is M, fixes uh, that character, and using the same idea to obtain the second one. And for any incorrect one, it takes the same amount of time except for the correct one. Okay, with this uh, idea, you can recover the whole secret. This was reported by John and others in their CCS17 paper and fixed with another variant that I uh, call JT variant 2, but it turned out that this variant is, is still vulnerable. In this case, it is uh, leaking the length of the secret. Whenever the length of the secret and a query match, it takes slightly more time than otherwise. So fortunately, uh, developers noticed this problem and give another fix that I call JT variant 3. So now the question is that how we can go about uh, finding out whether this variant is secure against timing side channel or not. So unlike other security issues, such as denial of service attack or algorithmic complexity issue, that you need only one single trace to go profile and find out the root cause of problem, properties such as side channels, they are hyper properties. They are not property of one single trace, they are property of multiple traces. And you may need to compare those traces to find out the root cause. So in this case, it is not an imaginary picture to see that uh, side channel analyzers running two profilers, comparing them at the same time to find out what went wrong. Uh, in fact, if you go more than yes or no and quantitatively analyze side channels, you may need to run multiple of them. And we cannot expect human analysis to do it manually. And we have other challenges, such as time doesn't exist in the syntax or semantics of the program. Um, this uh, the interesting application or large application uh, with uh, dynamic invocation and so on. All of these challenges motivated us to develop a data-driven differential debugging that combines program analysis with machine learning to detect and explain side channels. So let's see how it works in high level for uh, basically debugging JT variant tree. So we start off by gathering interesting set of secret and guesses. We consider two domains. On original domain or uninstrumented version, we use to record response time. And we do in the following fashion. For a secret like pass, we observe the response time of Jetty on multiple guesses, A, B, A, B, and so on and so forth. As a result, we can fit a function. This function is going to represent the timing function for secret pass. What we are he have here is 800 timing function for 800 possible secret values. But at this point, we don't know how these timing function are related to each other and whether they are side channels. To obtain those, we use clustering. Clustering partitions the space of timing function into equivalence class observation, such that two functions that are in the same cluster, they are not distinguishable from each other. For example, these three blue functions, they are in the same cluster because they are so close to each other, whereas uh, other green functions, they are in separate cluster. Here we have 20 clusters. The fact that there are more than one cluster means that there are side channels. So the next step is to find out what parts of the code are vulnerable and establish uh, from that what properties about secret are leaking. For that, we turn to program internal. 
for the same inputs, basically, we obtain uh, in, uh, program internal properties such as what basic block called, how many times they are called, and those kind of information. And remember, we have the equivalence, uh, basically, uh, corresponding cluster label from time domain. We add that, and this problem now becomes a discriminant learning problem. We are interested to know what properties are common inside the cluster, what property, that's basic block called, distinguish one cluster from another cluster. For that, we use decision tree models. Decision tree classifier is one way to learn discriminant models. And it, uh, it shows that the fact that we are calling line 106 inside the string equals function is the root cause of the differences. So it shows the uh, basically loop body, and the number of times we are taking that loop, it still depends on the length of the secret. It still, after third fix, the length was leaking in this thing. Uh, it, this has been since fixed by the developers by a secure variant that doesn't leak any information. Okay, but uh, the next aspect is for functional side channels. So this is a novel way to model side channels. Uh, let's uh, one more time overview that. We say that uh, for a secret like 1010, we observe the response time on multiple public input and build function to represent that. Similarly, for other secret 110, we do the same thing, observe on multiple public input for the same secret and build these functions. So now I want to show why this is important. This is important from both attacking point of view and debugging point of view. So why it is important from attacking point of view? Imagine an open source library, an attacker on his local machine observe even, uh, black dots for even secret value, red dots for odd secret values. Okay, this is a uh, local machine observation. And now imagine that a remote server running the same instance of the library and uh, and attacker wants to find out whether the remote machine is running odd secret value or even secret value. So he obtains green dots for the remote observation. But as you can see, with existing definition, green looks far from both black or red, uh, basically black and red dots. So it's hard to find out whether it is um, basically odd or even secret value. Now let's turn to functional observation. We observe on multiple uh, public input build black functions for even secret value, red function for odd secret value. So for a remote observation, we also obtain like observation on multiple uh, public input and build green function. Now you can see that attacker has more information. Attacker can compare functions to determine which one is closer. And because of the remote observation, uh, that uh, basically differences are in the shape of function. And shape for linear model is a slope of function, basically. So with that comparison, attacker can find out that remote machine is running uh, even secret value. So this is also important from debugging point of view. Let's uh, see what's the idea here. Program P1 is leaking the number of set bits. The fact that there are uh, ones in the secret can be leaks from timing observation. This is a uh, point-wise observation. Uh, but we have on y-axis time, on x-axis we have different public inputs from bit stream 0 up to 111141. And we have similar values for secret. This is a point-wise observation. We have below a functional observation. Okay, uh, so what is uh, definition based on the existing work is what I call point-wise non-interference, where the idea is that fixed public input to values such as 0, 1, 1, any variation no depends only on secret values. In fact, we can find out how many classes of response time exist. If we do for any public input, we see five uh, basically classes in the response time inside the blue box. And that matches with the functional observation. Functional observation also showing there are five classes of functions. Now let's turn to program P2. Program P2 known that it is leaking the length of the secret. So pointwise observation, functional observation. If we fix public input to any value, we are observing two classes in the response time. But the function observation actually showing differencing. It shows that there are four classes of the function. And it matches with the reality. We have four possible lengths of the secret. So it turns out that existing definition may give false sense of the security, while this functional definition can capture a realistic one. As I mentioned, clustering is my main technique to obtain distinguishable class observation. Let's see how it works. Here we have 30 uh, timing functions, and we want to cluster them. Let's take a few samples, F0, F4, F8, and F20. 
This is constraint-based clustering. We are saying that if two functions are more than epsilon far from each other, they cannot be in the same cluster because they are distinguishable from each other. So we start our clustering algorithm by putting everything in the same cluster. But as you can see, F0, F20, they are in the same cluster. This is not allowable based on the constraints. So we increase number of cluster to two. Now F0, F8 are in the same cluster, and this is not allowable based on the constraint we have. So we increase number of cluster until all constraints are satisfied. And it turns out that with four uh, functions that are more than epsilon far from each other, they are in different clusters. Okay, this clustering. And I mentioned, as I mentioned, classification models such as decision tree classifiers are one way to explain timing side channels. Uh, so I want, uh, there are other approaches that in the paper, but I want to emphasize on this one. Uh, <clears throat> so we have set of interesting secret and public inputs, and we have timing model for that. We use the instrumented version of the program, obtain like what basic block calls, how many times they are called. But we are, the way that we are going to model basic block calls is similar to what we did for timing observation. For, like, uh, for secret 110 and basic block 18, we are going to collect number of calls to this basic block on multiple public inputs and build a function. This function summarizes any variation that depends on the public input. So if we compare functions, they are only depend on the secret values. So as you can see, for example, sec uh, basic block 13, for two secret values, I obtain the same like calls to the, uh, basically, for that uh, basic block. So it, in this case, a number of calls to this basic block really doesn't depend on the secret value. Okay, so with this, we can build this table. In each row of the table, we have a unique secret value. We have features that are basic block calls, and their evaluation are functional, uh, functional value. And then we have a labels, uh, basically, and this is like standard classification problem that we can use uh, uh, off-the-shelf like decision trees for that. So let's uh, now uh, see some case study that's studied in this work. So the first one is for OpenJDK, uh, regular expression operation. It has uh, almost uh, more than 600 methods. And the idea here is that imagine the regular expression that stored uh, is a secret information. So we have set of uh, secret and guesses, obtain it, almost six millions in this case. Uh, so we use a timing function to model timing behavior of uh, basically uh, regular expression library. Uh, then we apply clustering, obtain uh, basically whether there are different class of observation. As you can see, there are multiple clusters. So this indicates they are timing side channel. So we turn to program internal, obtain like interesting properties. And finally, with uh, adding labels, uh, the decision tree pinpoints align uh, 3,964 inside. Uh, basically, slice class is the root cause. When we look at that part, we can see that there is this part that it returns as soon as there is this max. And this uh, opens the door for the attacker to obtain prefix of the regular expression in each step attack. So the, uh, the interesting part about this one, when we discuss with the developers, uh, they uh, confirm it, but they say it is really difficult to fix. Um, so they basically suggest to add extra delays to basically resolve the, this issue if you have a pattern that is a secret information. The other thing is that to have use like secure library, but unfortunately for Java at least, there is no really secure regular expression. Um, so we also perform other like case study, like I, I, I control swap, that's open source F5 like library. We found their timing side channel in their password matching. And actually that explanation helped them also to basically address other issue in their closed source uh, projects. Uh, we found another timing side channel in Java X crypto. That's going to be addressed in the next version of OpenJDK. And many other like uh, proof of concept for as a part of the RPI stack program uh, that we use to show our app working for them. Okay, with this, I would like to thank you, and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thanks for speaking. <laughs> so I have a quick question about this uh, functional perspective. It's uh, quite fascinating, uh, but at the same time, it seems to also add some complexity in terms of uh, what distance function to use, right? So th there are many. Do you have a sense about in what situations, what distance functions should be used? Um, so yeah, that is a good question. So I think like if 
it is more or less flexible. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you don't worry about the absolute value, but you are worried about the shape of function, then you can use L1 like distance over derivatives of the functions, for yeah. example. Right, so, but if the end goal is to find side channels, right? Then I need to pick a particular distance function. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, for as a debugging perspective, like in my experiences, L1 like norm is uh, one norm is like proper distance to be used. Uh, so you may not want to use pointwise distance mm -hmm. because that may uh, both underestimate uh, the like the timing side channels. Uh, so I think that like using L1 norm for those kind of debugging purpose is the right one to do. Basically. Okay, sounds good. Um, any questions from the audience? Maybe I'll ask another one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess, um, you know, if a program has uh, some um, random effects that the timing may change depending on, um, depending on say, a coin, yeah. coin fl flip, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you don't get a deterministic functions, yeah. right? Would, would your technique still work in that case? Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe I can very quickly show one slide for, so we basically, I didn't show the detail, but we basically consider these uh, two, okay. So to follow like Gaussian distribution, and because we model as a Gaussian distribution, we basically use the mean of those measurements as the like points we consider, then with, uh, we basically with repetitive measurements, we build these Gaussian distributions, and then we say that each trace can be in different cluster with different probabilities. So this will help a little bit to have smooth and like handle those cases as well. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.